Hello class, welcome to lab one, learning markdown. So let's go ahead and go to the course website. Just scroll over here where labs, you're gonna find lab number one, learning markdown. And if you click here where this says video for this lab, you will find the link to this video that I'm recording right now. Uh, question one, we're going to install VS Code, which is the text editor we're gonna be using for the entirety of the semester. This is the only lab that you will perform in Windows. The rest of the labs are going to be completed inside Ubuntu. But we need to learn how we're going to write documents in the class in order for us to do the remaining of the homework. So the first lab is always performed in an environment that you are already familiar with. In this case, Windows. You can perform this lab in Mac OS as well and the instructions are almost the same. But, you know, you will have to use a little bit of common sense for the things that don't look exactly the same in Windows as they, lo as they look like in Mac OS. I heavily encourage um, Windows instead of Mac OS because the new iteration of Mac computers with the M1 chip, they don't play really well with virtualization. With that said, let's get to work. So the first thing we're going to do is install VS Code. You can directly click on the link over here where it says VS Code, which is going to take you to the download page. And we're going to click on Download for Windows. Installing this program is no different than installing any other program you have installed in your computer. It's just opening the installer and next, 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 next until the end. Let's give it a second and there you go. Open file, run. Yes. We're going to just click the default on this. It's all fine. Okay, now that the wizard has completed its installation process, we can launch Visual Studio Code right away. I will apologize ahead of time because I'm running Windows in a virtual machine at the moment so there is some performance uh, decrease that you will notice throughout the video. I don't have a Windows computer, yeah let's reopen it, I don't have a Windows computer that I can record with so my only choice is to record this in a virtual machine so apologies are in place. Okay, so this is how Visual Studio Code looks from the get-go. Uh, you get to choose your theme, and if you like, if you don't like this dark theme, you can install other themes as well. I like dark themes, so I always keep the dark theme. Um, and now let's just go full screen real quick, so I can explain you a little bit about how VS Code works. So over here we have our file manager within VS Code. Um, when we click on open folder, we open the folder where we're going to be working with our documents, the code and everything. I'm just going to close it for now. And the other things I will explain it as the course advances, but for now we're going to be using the file manager here, the file explorer. Then click where it says manage right there on the GIRS icon at the bottom left corner and then click on extensions. This can also be opened by pressing Control shift and letter X in the computer, which will open the same panel that you see over there. Now here we're gonna look for the extensions that we are going to install. Let me give you an example of this. For instance, let's say that I want to install a different theme. I like the Dracula theme for VS Code. You're gonna see me using that a lot. See, this is the extension. If I click on install, I'm gonna click Dracula. Notice how the appearance of my VS Code changed drastically. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and install the extensions that we are going to need for this lab. So I'm going to put this on the side. And the first one is Live Server. So we're going to click and look for Live Server. Install. Then we're going to install Markdown All-in-One. So we're going to search for Markdown All-in-One. Search. The one that I use is this one over here by Yu Zhang. Then we're going to do mark down preview enhance right here. This is the one that I use. Next, we're going to do mark down PDF. Click over here, convert uh, mark down PDF. Then mark, markdown table of contents or markdown TOC. 
we're gonna use that towards the end of the semester so let's get it up and running right now I use the first one over here uh, the rest of them work the exact same way so if you install a different one we'll be fine and we're gonna do also PDF preview which is an extension that will allow us to preview PDF files inside our code editor it's pretty handy and because we're gonna be typing uh, you know a couple of sentences here and there we're gonna install a spell checker because nobody likes you know grammar mistakes in their in their documents right a spell called spell check right here the first one is the English one we're almost done and yeah that's about it now I like to install other extensions um, that I use also during the semester we're gonna take a look at them later on when we're working on our um, final project they're mostly for you know HTML CSS and JavaScript but they we're gonna see them towards the end of the semester or when you get to work on the final project so for now this is all we need we can close this we can close this page over here as well now we're gonna create a github account using your PCCC email address so go to github.com and when you get over here all you have to do is let's just go full screen you click on sign up and this is just like signing up for any other page you have done in the past you follow you have signed in the form you know provide your email address continue just no different from anything else I have already created a, a github account so I won't be doing it in the video but again this is fairly simple once you have the the account created make sure that you save that password well because we're gonna be using it a lot and please use your PCCC email address because all, uh, you know, as you progress in your career, you're gonna create another another GitHub account with your actual email address, or maybe you wanna change it later on. But for now, let's just keep it within the, the, the scope of the school. So I'm gonna pause the video now, sign in, and then be back in a few. Okay, so I have signed in into my GitHub account. Now, you this is the first page that you will be presented with over here let's take a look at the instructions first um, okay now we're gonna create a repository called CIS 106 so we're gonna click on new and we're gonna call this CIS 106 that's it CIS 106 make sure it's all lowercase uh, in the description we're gonna put this is my repo for a spring 23 Linux fundamentals We're gonna keep this as public. Uh, we don't need to add a readme, and then just click on create repository. Now we're gonna leave this page open. Just leave it as th like that, open. Uh, later on, as the semester progress, we're gonna explore what these commands are and what they do. But for now, let's just leave them as is. Okay. Now, this question requires no submission. There is no need to take a screenshot. So we're gonna move along and go to question number two. In your documents folder you're gonna create a folder called lab one so we're gonna go over here we're gonna go to documents and here we're gonna create a folder called lab one done now we're gonna open VS code and then we're gonna open the folder lab one now this is the first thing that you need to learn about working with VS code you never open a single file you always open a folder then you do whatever changes you need to do to the particular file you save and you close one of the biggest problems that students have when they are working with VS Code and GitHub is that they open a single file like if they were working with a Microsoft Word document it doesn't work this way we work with a collection of files here so we work in what is called a work environment the work environment is that folder where all your files live so in order for us to get started working we're gonna open a folder we're gonna locate the folder that we're gonna be saving our files in which is in documents lab one and then we click on select folder again documents lab one and then select folder notice over here yes trust the authors that that folder called lab one has been opened in the file explorer if you need to create files you can do it with this icon over here that will ask you for the name let's say test file.txt I don't like to put a space in my file name so there you go and you have created a, a single file inside your lab one folder you can also create folders here by clicking the folder icon and call it test folder All right 
and then inside this folder by clicking on the folder notice the arrow as it changes you can create a file and we we'll call this file 2 file 2 inside folder that txt right now we're gonna go and take a look at the file manager in Windows notice that if I open lab 1 there is a file over here there is a folder and there is a file over here as well within the folder now one thing that I suggest you to do in your Windows computer is that you enable file extensions so you click on view and then make sure you click here in file name extensions this is gonna be very very important because some of the stuff that we're gonna be doing require the file extension to be visible for you to edit the files accordingly so now that we have done that we're gonna close this we're gonna delete this so we can just click on right click delete move to recycle bin and delete great now what we're gonna do then is we're gonna download the folder called right here download the following compressed file so we're gonna click on the file which is gonna automatically download it over here we're gonna open this right click open in a new window and the contents of this folder we're gonna just grab this actually we are missing a couple of files from this compressed file so I'm gonna pause the video then make the the changes and then get back to you oh, okie dokie so I have already fixed the problem on the site that was downloading the wrong file so we're gonna delete this and I'm gonna get the right one so let's refresh this and click on file Open in a new window and oops that's still the wrong one that's too old okay why hasn't it been uploaded okay let me take another look okay so it seems that it's keep catching the wrong file uh, so I'm just gonna copy the link and I'm gonna open it in a private browser so that I get the latest version of the file and yeah this is correct this is what we're looking for so just just minimize that and now that we have the proper file make sure that the file you downloaded contain all of this over here if you're not getting all of this make sure that you download it from this URL here um, you can also always slag me if you're having any problems getting the proper file and I'll make sure to share either this URL or the file directly with you. So, But by the time you're working on this lab, it should cache properly and the website shouldn't have a problem loading the proper file. So we're just going to copy all of this and we're going to paste it inside here, inside the lab1 folder. Okay, Again, you open the compressed file that you downloaded, copy all of these files and you paste them in the inside the lab one folder right notice that the moment you paste the files over here they will appear in your VS code over here if it doesn't look like mine you're doing something wrong please go back in the instructions now let's go back here and now that we have completed question number two we can get started with question number three which is the meat of this lab now here we're gonna learn how to use markdown there is a presentation that you can either go and review it on your own or you can do it with me as we complete the lab to learn how to use markdown we're gonna be creating a simple document oh, I have provided all the files for you for creating the document so you can just follow my instructions here in the video and then after we complete question number three you have a challenge question where I have given you a scenario and your goal is to replicate uh, a document in this case a simple resume for an imaginary person information that is also given in the files you just downloaded so let's get started so we're gonna open the presentation we can close this because we don't need it there you go and we're gonna create a new file called what is Ubuntu underscore submission that MD inside the lab one folder so we're gonna go over here create a new file and we're gonna call it what is Ubuntu underscore submission that md make sure you provide the file extension without the file extension vs code will not know how to treat this document okay now we're using markdown we are going to replicate this document over here so our goal is to get 
a document that looks exactly like this PDF file that is going to pop up over here. Again, I apologize for the slowness and the delay in this computer. It is a virtual machine at the end of the day. Let me just open it. Oh, it's installing the, uh, the, the Chromium extension. There you go. So our goal is to create a document that looks exactly like this, which is the kind of document that you're going to be giving me every time you submit an assignment with me. So we're going to learn how to put, how put pictures, you know, how to create tables and things like that. So we're going to close that. My apologies for that. So let's get started. What is Markdown? Simply put, it is a way of writing documents. It's a Markdown, it's a markup language that allows us to write documents, similar to how HTML allows us to write documents that are websites. So how does Markdown work? Well, let's analyze this PDF file first so that you take it, so that you see what I mean. So we wanna open this. Notice that this text is bigger than this. This is called a heading or a title. This over here is a paragraph. This is table. All of these things comprise a document. A document has um, a lot of elements in it. So all of these elements require a specific type of formatting. What Markdown does is that it makes the formatting as simple as it can possibly make. And with simple formatting, Markdown becomes a very extensible tool because a document that is formatted in a, in a simple structure can then be converted into any other format that we like. For instance, a PDF file, a presentation, a Word document, you know, and even a, an HTML document, which we're going to see during this lab. So let's start with big text, right? Headings. How do we format headings in Markdown? Well, it's very simple. You put the number sign and then you start typing the heading. So in Markdown, you have, I believe, seven headings, right? The biggest one being the first one, and then the smallest one being seven. So how do we know which one is the big, which one is small, and so on? Well, the amount of number signs at the beginning. So one pound sign means heading one, two, heading two, three, heading three. For example, in our document over here, let's open what is Ubuntu on the side, we have one heading, which is the main heading, which is what is Ubuntu, then everything else is nested within heading number one, this being the title of the page. So what we do is we put pound sign and then what is Ubuntu. And this is the heading of our document. Okay. We also have Ubuntu release cycle. We have also uh, within Ubuntu release cycle being this heading number two, we have also a heading number three for this table and then we also we go back to a heading number two over here because it finishes the section in the document that we're writing so why don't we take a look at that now to make this lab faster i provided with you i provided you um, a text document that contains all the text in the pdf which is going to make copying and pasting much much easier so we're going to copy this we're going to paste it over here again control c control z control v Let's see if we're missing any other. So we have what is Ubuntu, release cycle, currently supported releases, features, how to update Ubuntu, and I think that's all the, the, the headings that we have. So now we know that this is a heading two, right? And we know this is a heading number three. Then we know this is a heading two. We know by the size of the text. And finally, we have one last heading two over here, right? Let's save our file by click on file save or using control s in the keyboard and that's how you do headings now next paragraphs paragraphs are super simple because all you have to do is start typing and that's it they require no formatting whatsoever you just start typing on an empty line and you're typing a paragraph for instance we have this paragraph over here so why don't we just copy the paragraph that we have over here see this is a paragraph notice that i did no formatting whatsoever. I just put it in an empty line and that's it. Now, obviously, text within a paragraph can have formatting, like bold, uh, italics, and things like that. For instance, if we take a look at our document here, we notice that this is
bold this is bold and, it, and italics this is just italics so how do we do this formatting well it's quite simple so for bold we use two stars at the beginning and at the end of the text that we want to bold and that's it make sure you provide no spaces here right no spaces at the beginning no spaces in the end if you want to do italics for example here we have free and open source software just use a single star single asterisk single asterisk and that's it and if you if you want to do the two of them at the same time like we have over here where it says desktop server and core we can do three one two three one two three and that's it now we're gonna save our document and let's say that we want to take a look at we want to have a preview of how this document is looking like so far well remember one of the extensions that we installed was a markdown preview so if you click on markdown preview and hence here it will open a panel on the side which is going to give us a preview of how the document looks like so far so we're going to close that i don't keep that open while i am working i just use it for you know previewing my document every once in a while and that's about it okay and that's it that's just a little bit of formatting that you can do within a paragraph we also have a strike through which is going to put a line uh, in the middle of a particular word you know we do this over here with the tilde character for example if i want to strike through this part this entire sentence here notice that i put two tilde characters at the beginning two tilde characters in the end and if you do a preview see i strike through line in the middle of the sentence i rarely use that formatting but you know it exists so it's good to know that it's there okay oh sorry there you go perfect now some of you may be asking can we do wonders or underscore no you can't because that in html this is a strictly used for urls so markdown does not support that now working with list and order list right so how do we do list it's very simple just type for instance here is a list of pets one period space pets it will automatically create start a list of pets right for example if we can do it right here we have pets notice that the moment i press enter number two appears right away we can do here foods we can do here then uh cities right and as i press enter the numbers start appearing automatically we can also indent the list this is called an order list because it follows a specific order if i press enter here and then use the tab key on the keyboard it will automatically create an indented list so example of pets we have dogs uh, cats parrots and so on we can also do the same with here let's say foods we can have fast food healthy food and we can also create another level of indentation here we can call this uh, burgers pizza and here we can do here broccoli and so on now let's do a preview and see how this looks like see a perfectly list of indented items gets created automatically for us now let's take a look at the document and see where we have a list so we have a list over here uh, default installation of Ubuntu contains a wide range of software blah 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 so let's copy this text and format it correctly so let's go to what is Ubuntu and here we have Ubuntu features and we're gonna copy this guy up let's paste it right over here and let's see so we have a uh, on order list and we have an order list here so this is already formatted so if you want to do the formatting yourself you can delete this one two three four now this here is an on order list now to do this we're gonna use uh, either the star the plus sign or the minus sign character it doesn't matter it will really it will do the same the same thing so we're gonna do a star here then we're going to tab notice that it indents automatically tab 
tab. Now I'm gonna delete one space, press enter, but I don't want this to be indented, so I'm gonna delete one more time, and it will automatically go to the first, uh, the first order. So we're gonna do the same thing over here, this over here, and finally, this over here. Let's save our document and let's do a little preview and see how our unordered list looks like. See? Beautiful. And that's how list works. Again, like I said before, you can use the star character or you can use the minus character. See? Software, hardware. You know, we can also use the plus sign, for example. Um, Microsoft Office HDD hard drive RAM no and when you do the preview it's still gonna look like a bullet point. It's gonna understand it the exact same way. So whether you like to use plus signs, minus signs, or stars for your on order list, it is irrelevant. It will still translate to bullet points. So we're gonna delete this space over here, save our document. All right, let's see if we have any other lists over here that we'd like to do, and we don't, so that's fine. So here are other examples of creating lists that you can explore on your free time. Now let's talk about block quotes. Now block quotes are text within your document that you want to call attention to the user. You want the user to see that this is an important message for the user to read. Right? It's very useful when we are putting in quotes or uh, you know blocks of, of code or when we want to just put a warning in a, in a documentation for a user to be aware of. Those are mostly the usages that I have for block quotes. And how do you do them? Very easy, very easy. That's it. So let's see if we have a block quote in our PDF file. And right here, we have a block quote over here of something very important that, it, that the user that is reading this document should know. So cross distribution is that packages, blah, 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 blah. We're gonna go over here to what is Ubuntu and we're gonna copy the text over here. And we're gonna format this as a code block. And we know that it goes right over here. So greater than sign, press enter, save and if you do preview enhance notice that it is successfully uh, successfully formatted as a code block right if you want this to look you know pretty you can just put everything in a single line over here like this but still it's gonna be the same no matter what nice we can put also indented code blocks you know you can put it inside, a code block inside a code block, and so on. You can play around with this in your free time. Next, let's talk about code blocks. Now, this is really useful when we are documenting code, which is something you will be doing in your final project, or when we want to highlight commands or explain technical things that require code and commands and things like that in your document, right? This is going to give it a different formatting that is going to be obvious to the reader that this is code. This is something that will run, right? So we use for this the backtick character, right? We can do it either as a block or we can do it inline. Inline meaning within the same sentence, you know, uh, code block means a block on its own. So let's see what, how that looks like in our PDF file. So here in our PDF file, we have a message for the reader. Hey, if you want to update Ubuntu, the operating system we will learn throughout the semester, run these commands one after each other. So what we're gonna do is we are going to place this right over here, how to update Ubuntu. So when we open our text file, we have all of this text. And we're gonna copy the whole thing. We're gonna paste it right over here. Now this, we need to format it as a code block, right? So we're gonna put three tilde ca backticks characters over here and three over here. Now for the sake of keeping my document neat and easy to read, even when it is in markdown format, I like to put spaces in between, right? But it's not really required because it will automatically understand that everything within these backtick characters is a code block. Now for inline, 
code formatting, we use a single backtick. For example, I want to format this command here, sudo apt install vlc, and then also this one over here, which is right here, until here, sorry, until here. I'm gonna put this in a single line so I don't break formatting. Save your document, and if you do a preview, see how the code is formatted. It uses a different font than this one, and see how the inline version works. If you were to be reading this as a tutorial, you will automatically understand that this here is code, right? Because the font and the, and the background color lets you know, hey, this is code. Now, this is industry standard, and this is how it's normally done. So we're gonna close this. I'm gonna come over here. Let's see what else we have. Uh, links, this is important, right? Because every documentation has links. Every document that you read on the in the internet has a link to another page. Now this is where formatting, you know, gets a little tricky and you need to start remembering things because it's not as intuitive. So the formula that we use for links is quite straightforward. In square brackets, we put the text that is gonna be displayed to the reader. And here we put the URL, right, the page that the user will be redirected to upon clicking on the particular word. For example, this here, Google, https google.com, is a search engine. To the reader in the final document, it will simply say Google, in blue letters, is a search engine. But this becomes a hyperlink because we provided here a location to where the user should be redirected. Now, in our document, we have a couple of links. So if we go all the way to the second paragraph over here, let's copy this right away. Let's put it right over here where it says Ubuntu release cycle, right here. Right, so Ubuntu release cycle, I'm gonna put this in a single, I'm gonna put this in a single line. Ubuntu release cycle every six months, blah, 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 blah. Let's take a look at which links we, are, we have to use. So we have this one. When you click on it, it will send you to Ubuntu.com. So let's do a little formatting here. So when we go here, we're gonna surround the word Ubuntu with the square brackets. Then right here, we put open and close parentheses and the URL within the parentheses. If you, pre if you uh, do a preview of this document, Notice how this letter is now blue and it is a hyperlink to the website ubuntu.com. Now the same thing, we're gonna do the same thing for 22.04, right? So if we click on 22.04, we get the URL and it is the URL to download Ubuntu 22.04. So right over here, where it says 22.04, again, surround the text with the square brackets and within parentheses, no spaces, you put in there the URL to where the user is gonna land once they click on 22.04. And that's how you do links, pretty straightforward. You can also link to documents within your, your folder. For example, if I want to link uh, long-term support, here I can just provide the name of one of the files in the folder, and when the user clicks on this, then will be redirected to a file over here. It doesn't need to be a URL, it can be a link to a file within your project. So we're gonna close that. That is something we're not gonna be doing in the semester, but it's something, it's something that is useful to know. Okay, now, for images, we use a very, very similar formula. Formula is almost the same, except that we put an exclamation mark at the beginning. And that's it. And now we have successfully inserted an image inside our document. Now, we have here in our document an image of Ubuntu features. Here is Ubuntu desktop. So we're gonna insert this image inside our markdown file. So this is located right underneath Ubuntu features. So we're gonna go to Ubuntu features. And over here, this is com good convention. Always put an image in, in the, its own line. Put a space above it and a space below it. It's just gonna make your document easier to read, easier to troubleshoot, and it's just just better formatting overall. So how do we do it? Start with an exclamation mark. In brackets, put a description to your image. I'm gonna call this Ubuntu desktop. And then within um, 
within a parenthesis place your uh, the name of your image. If the image is located inside the folder that you have the markdown file in, all you have to do is put the name of the image. Make sure that uh, you are wary of capital letters because capi uh, capitalization matters um, and also uh, the file extension. So the name, name of the file must be exactly the name that it is in the folder. If your image is located in a different folder, you need to provide the path to it. This is a concept that we will explore in other lectures in the class. So for now, since the picture is right here inside our folder, we just have to provide the name of the image, which is this one, Ubuntu desktop.png. Ubuntu desktop.png. Right? Let's save our document and let's take a look at Markdown Preview Enhance. Notice how the image was successfully inserted. If you spell the image wrong, for example, I'm gonna put the name wrong name over here, you get a broken uh, link icon over here. This tells you that there is a problem with the image, the image file cannot be found, you provided the wrong path, or the name is incorrect. Now, let me show you a trick of VS Code, right? So let's say that I start typing Ubuntu, but I don't wanna type the whole thing. You can press Control and the space bar, and it will open a little menu for auto-completing every single file that contains the word Ubuntu. I know that I want Ubuntu Desktop, so I'm gonna press Enter over here, and it will automatically auto-fill the rest of the name. You know, it's just a way of working faster. So now that we have inserted an image over here, let's see if we have any other images that we want to insert. And yeah, we have a logo at the bottom, so we're gonna go at the bottom of the document, right here, remember, I leave one space, and then in the next space, I provide the image that I'm inserting. So here we're gonna call this Ubuntu logo and here's the name of the image Ubuntu logo. There we go. Save your document and notice that the picture has been inserted successfully right there. And that's how you do images. Exclamation mark, little description in brackets and then the name of the image or the URL. Let's say you have an image on the internet that you want to insert in your document. Well, you can do that. Let's say, for example, can I get this logo? Let's see, save link as, copy link. Let's see if it gives us, nope. So we're gonna go here, Ubuntu logo, PNG. All right, let's say I wanna use this image over here. Right click, copy image link. Let's make sure it's, yeah, that's uh, it's a link to an image. So when we open VS Code and you put, it, put the link of the image right over here, notice that how the image get inserted into my document right away. So again, the name of the image, if you have it locally within the folder or a URL to the web, if it is available on the internet. Description over here, Ubuntu logo two. And that's it. So we don't need this. I'm just gonna get rid of it. That was just a demonstration. Now, tables. Now, tables are a little tricky. I don't expect you to get them from day one. They are a little tricky, and you will have to create a couple of tables throughout the semester. But if you keep this presentation handy and this example in your mind, you'll be fine. Now, let's take a look at the syntax. So the first thing is a pipe character, table header, a description, pipe character. Now, if you look at this format over here, this looks already like a table, right? It looks like a table. For instance, that's how it's gonna render like. That's the formatting, that's the output. So let's build something like that. So I'm gonna build a table of puppies, right? Uh, I don't know, puppies names. So I'm gonna call over here, pipe. I'm gonna call dog name, right? This is gonna be the first column. Second column will be dog owner, right? And then the last column will be dog date of birth, right? Then end in another pipe. You can see that we have three columns over here. Now the next line, I'm gonna put a couple of hyphens over here, couple of hyphens over here, couple of hyphens over here. Now this looks wonky, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna right click on my document and click on format document. It will automatically add the necessary, the necessary hyphens and spaces for our table to be properly formatted. See how it's starting to take shape over here in the preview. Now, let's put, a couple, let's put some data in here. So let's start with dog name. I'm gonna call this Lucky, right? And then 
Who's the owner? The owner is Mario Lopez. And the date of birth is 1-1-19. Right, let's add a little bit more data. So let's put another pet name. Uh, I'm gonna call this um, uh, Fido or Fido, right? And the owner is Luis Serra. And then, oops, sorry. Let's control C that, there you go. And then the date of birth is 2-2-17. Two, two, uh, now let's save this document and format the document. See how the table starts taking shape. Now here's a bit of advice when working with tables. Always list a, a space above the table and a space below the table. Because sometimes the formatting can break when you don't do it that way. Right? The formatting, it doesn't understand it correctly when you don't put the proper spacing. So I always do that to make sure the spacing is correct. Save this. Now I'm gonna remove this table from here. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to grab the table that we have here in our document and I'm going to format it successfully. So we're going to go to currently support the releases, which is right over here. Currently support the releases. I'm going to paste my data in here. So I know that we're going to start with the pipe here and every single line has a pipe. So we're going to put our pipes right there. I know that underneath here, I'm going to have another, I'm oh, sorry. I'm gonna have another line that has the little hyphens, right? So I know this is the first column, which is code version, and then name, release, version code, name, version code name, then we have release date, then we have end of support, then we have security support end, Okay, now we're gonna add the columns. So we know this is a column over here. We know this is a column over here. We know this is another one. And finally, this is another one. Okay, so now we're going to see how it start taking shape over here. Now we're gonna put this in their proper location. So we know that the Version code name is uh, 14.04. Let me make sure that we have the proper columns over here because we might have to add a new column. Not 100% sure. Okay, so we have version and then code name. So, yeah, that was what I was missing. So, here we are going to put a pipe. I'll put another pipe. There you go. And let's do another preview so you see how the table starts taking shape. So now everything is inside one table, one column. We don't want that. Let's start splitting this up. So here we have the first column, right? We put in a space over here. Then LTS, oops, sorry. LTS is part of the name. So let's fix that. Now the name here are the name of the distributions. So we're gonna put here trusty tar. There you go. Trusty signal service, bionic beaver, focal fossa, and then jellyfish. Okie dokie. Then next release date. It's right over here, over here. And finally, we have end of support. And finally, su security support end. So we're gonna do the same thing for the next column. And now we're gonna format our document 
sorry the window is a little small there you go that's a that's a lot better and oops we missed one over here so let's delete that 2023 there you go that's where it's supposed to go perfect our table has successfully been formatted so we're going to click on save so that we can save our document and yeah that's how you do tables my suggestion practice building a couple of more tables whatever comes up to your mind because you know this syntax can be a little tricky now there are some syntax that are specific to uh, github because since markdown is a standard many different companies implement it in their own way there is gfn your github specific markdown which is what we're going to be mostly using in the classroom right but gitlab has their own Im implementation of markdown and so on and on now this is how you can do checkboxes in github if you want to include that in any documentation that you put on github it's not something we're going to be using in the course but it's good to know that it exists now here's code a specific uh you know uh syntax highlighting like if you want if you are writing python code in your github repository and you want your users that are reading to know that this is python code you can provide the language and then put in there the the code block in in the same formatting that we used before but the difference here is this so notice how the formatting the coloring and everything looks different from python than it looks from c plus plus so that's what is called this called code specifics code block formatting right it's not something we're going to be using in the class either it's just something that is good for you to have in the back of your mind that it exists and finally i know that remembering all of this stuff is a pain in the neck so there is a cheat sheet over here for you make sure that you have this link handy download this page if you want to you know that's a good idea because you are going to be using markdown a lot so it is good to have this heavy handed right it's just I forgot how to do something. Go to the cheat sheet. I forgot how to do the images. The cheat sheet has a formula. Oh my God, I forgot how to do list. Cheat sheet again. Throughout the entire semester, I'm gonna be encouraging you to download cheat sheets. I do not encourage memorization. That's a horrible way of learning. Try to understand how something is done. Practice it, and if you forget, go to your notes, go to your cheat sheet. If you understand something, it's easy to remember. But if you memorize something, the moment you forget it, you will have to do the same amount of studying again. It's just cumbersome. If you want to memorize things, buy a computer. That's what we invented them. We humans choose to better understand things rather than memorizing them. Memorization is a horrible thing to do when you're doing anything related to computers. Just try to understand. That's much, much better. You practice a lot. Now, with that said, make sure that you complete your... your um, your document, uh, I think there are a couple of things that we missed over here. Let's see. So we have this. We have the release cycle. That's perfectly done. That's done. That's done. That's done. That's done. That's done. I think we did everything that we need to do. So we can close this. We can close this. Close this. Now, let's talk about converting this markdown file into a PDF or any other formatting out there. Now, we install an extension for that. If you right click anywhere in your document, you will have these options over here. Now, the first time that I want to try is converting to PDF. If you click on converting to PDF, the first time you convert to PDF is going to take a little bit because it needs to install some other things in the background, as you see over here. All right? Give it a second. And over here, we're going to get a PDF document. So yeah, at the moment, we have a temporary HTML. And now we have a PDF document of the document we created notice that it looks just like the document that i created that i gave you as a reference right so we're going to close this now let's convert this to html why not right so let's export to html and now my document is an entire html page no need to write any html whatsoever we have a properly written html document over here if i right click and i do live server it's going to preview this website in our web browser. Yes, allow access. And this is how the HTML looks of our markdown file. This makes web development slightly easier. Like, not a slightly, not a slightly. I use it a lot all the time for making websites. So to me, it works very well. So let's also convert to other formats just for the sake of practicing, right? So how about converting this to uh, a picture, right? A JPEG. right so now it is a picture 
the entire document is just a picture. Isn't that nice? Now let's close this. We don't need the picture, so we can just delete it. All right. Let's go back to the instructions and see what we're missing. Now, using Markdown, replicate the document what is Ubuntu, which you already did. Now make sure to copy and paste text. That's what we did. We did not, we're not practicing typing here. Then convert to PDF and convert to HTML. Now we have a challenge question for you. Challenge question. Now, your friend Joe has asked you to make one, a one-page resume for him. He has given you all his information in a text file. Now let's take a look at that. So we have Joe info right over here, and we can open it here in VS Code as well. So this is all the information from Joe that we need. It's right over here. Since you have recently learned about Markdown, you want to write your resume using Markdown and then give him a PDF file of his resume. Now, this is your, your job. Using Markdown, create a one-page resume for John Doe. In the compressed file you, that you downloaded, you will find an image. That is true. Here is an image of him. A re resume.png. Okay, so we have another image here, which is how your file should look like. It should look exactly like this after you have converted Markdown to HTML. So I gave you this as a reference so that you know exactly what you're looking for. Uh -huh. And once you're done, convert it to PDF. Once you have written the Markdown file, convert the file to PDF and HTML. Now, once you have completed all of this, once you're done with the challenge question, this is what you're gonna give me in Blackboard. So you're gonna give me the markdown file for the resume and what is Ubuntu submission.md, right? You're gonna give me those two markdown files. You're gonna give me the PDF file of the resume that you created and the one that you built in the lab, which is what is Ubuntu submission. Now, you're gonna upload everything to, get to, VS to GitHub and you're gonna give me the URL to your repository. Now let's do this right now. So remember that we kept our, see, let's go to github.com, have it right over here. We're gonna open our repository called CIS 106 and you're gonna be found with this page over here. Now what you're gonna do is upload an existing file. So you're gonna click over here, upload an existing file, click choose your files gonna go to lab one and you're gonna select everything in your folder again you're gonna do this when you're done make sure that before you do this you save your document every semester there are the students who do all the work don't save the document then give me an empty document and I have to give them a zero because you gave me an empty document save your work please save your work save constantly now once you have saved everything you're done Select everything, click on open. This is gonna upload your files and then click on right over here. You're gonna type lab one done. All files uploaded. Click on commit changes. It's gonna take a little bit, not that long. And now you're gonna give me this URL. Right, so this URL, you're gonna submit this URL in Blackboard as well. So I'm gonna sign into uh, PCCC real quick to show you what, I, what I'm talking about when I say submit this URL in Blackboard. Okay, so I got bad news. PCCC's website is down right now, so I can't show you exactly how to submit the assignment. Um, so here is what you need to do. When, when you get to the lab submission box, what you're gonna give me is um, the markdown files and the PDF files of your submission, both of the resume and this. Then there is a section that says uh, type your submission. There you're gonna paste the URL to your GitHub repository. You can also put it in the comment section. Once the website goes online, I'm gonna try my best to include a little image over here showing you exactly what you need to give me for those who need the assistance. Um, if you are stuck at this point, again, just as like me, send me a message, I'll help you out. We can hop on a Zoom call and I can just guide you through what you need to give me. I will do my best to find, uh, to find some time today or tomorrow to upload just a short video on how to submit the assignments because I know some of you, this is your first semester, so I'm sympathetic to that. So um, nothing that we can do, the page isn't working, so we gotta wait until the IT department fixes that. 
Um, in the meantime, if you give me this assignment late, you, be, you will lose 30 points. This assignment becomes late, a minute after the submission goes away. This is due next, uh, next week, next Tuesday at midnight, 11.55, 59pm, something like that. Again, if you give it to me late, if you give it to me the next day, or if you give it to me one day before the semester is over, it's still 30 points. You lose 30 points automatically. That doesn't count anything that you get wrong in the assignment. If you got something wrong in the assignment, I, I'll continue discounting points. Anything that you give it to me late, my policy is 30 points off. That's about it. Give it to me late, you lose 30 points. You're working with 70. Do not give me late stuff. That's my advice. If you have a problem, outstanding circumstances are understood, I can extend it. But it has to be an outstanding circumstance. Like I got sick or something like that. You know, it has to be, you gotta explain it to me. And I'll give you an extension. Other than that, anything late, 30 points. If you have any questions, slack me. If you email me, it's gonna be about 48 hours for me to get back to you. Just slack me, it will be faster. I'll see you in the next video or in class.